I uh, want everyone to give him a warm welcome and hear what the, hear what the man of God has to say today Amen. in the house. Amen. 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 Can we just continue to worship right now? I just, I want to stay in that place of worship. If you guys want to get up and, and walk around or if you want to sit on the floor, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I appreciate it sitting, but just Jesus, we need you, God. Jesus, we need you in this house. Lord, we thank you for your presence, God. We thank you, God, that you are here, that you're in this place right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. We give you praise and adoration, God. Amen. We glorify your name, God. We glorify the name Jesus. It is the name that is above every other name. It is the name that has been given all authority. It is the name that does it all. He frees us. He sets us free. I just feel like God really wants to do a, a deliverance in here today. Danielle set it up on, uh, when she was playing. I feel like God wants to heal people. God wants to break chains. Chains are to be broken today. Chains are to be broken in Jesus' name. There's going to be chains that are broken in Jesus' name. Amen. So God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. And I thank you for this young man right here. I thank you that he is a man of his presence. You're a man of his, you're a young man, but you're going to be a man. You're going to be a man, and he's going to change your tears. Amen. Tears, just like Pastor Linda said, he's going to take those tears, and he's going to bring them to joy. Amen. He's going to bring them to joy. You are going to be a man of his word. You're going to be a man of his word. Okay? And there's no pressure here. There's no pressure. I'm just, just giving you something that's free. It's free, no charge. I may never even see you again. It doesn't matter. The point is this. God is desperately in love with you. He Amen. is so crazy about you. Like, crazy about you, dude. There is a fire that is burning in you. I just see like a, a mantle. You were talking about a mantle. I see a mantle on you. I see this like old, uh, like a, um, gosh, I, I, can't, I don't know if I can put words to it. It's like, I don't want to say, I don't want to put a name, like if, if we all get an idea of like Smith Wigglesworth or something like that, but I see like a, a, a like almost like a Smith Wigglesworth or, 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 or George Whitfield. Like there's something there. There's something really, really powerful. So God, I, I just declare the word of God. I, I just say that the word of God is food for your spirit, for that which we see. That is what we're filled with. The eye is the lamp of the body. The eye is Amen. the lamp of the body. What's your name? What is your name? Michael? Michael. I'm David. Hey, oh, I'm David, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lord, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Oh, amen. I don't even know if I could get this out <laughs> today. Wow. Oh, gosh. Man, his presence is so powerful right now. Amen. It's so powerful. It's so powerful here. His presence is so powerful. God, he loves spending time with us, guys. He just loves it. He's jealous for us. It's not a worldly jealous. He is, it's like a fiery jealous. He's like, ugh. It's like, I want him. I want Michael. I want him. Ugh. Ugh. Amen. And there's healing in this house. There's such healing here. There's, a he there, there, there's such healing, and God wants to do so many amazing things, and I'm trying to get myself together because I'm just taken back. Thank you for that word, by the way. I, I know you were being obedient. I just want to say that was just, <laughs> you, know, you did it, man. That's all. Just, just thank you for your obedience. Amen. Uh, uh, my name is David Burdick. I was introduced, um, just introducing myself again. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I'm a part of Freedom Ministries International. I've been here before. My wife and I actually, we were visiting here for a while. I know Danielle and David. I've known Danielle for wherever Danielle is for quite some time. Oh, there you are. Sorry, I couldn't see your green shirt. Um, <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm a part of Freedom Ministries. You know Pastor Igor Ashkenazi, everyone. Awesome man of God. Awesome man of the word. Only God can do that. I'm, I'm under a Russian man, and I, I'm a part of, they have two outreaches, and I don't know if you guys know this, there's one in Manhattan, I, there's a bunch of them internationally, but there's one in Manhattan, and there's one in Brooklyn, Manhattan is the English speaking one, and um, we, we just were using another church's space, and then there's one in Brooklyn, and that is generally among the Russian people, and he preaches on the Jewish roots, as you know, so we get a lot of like Jewish, you know, Russian Jewish people. 
We're getting a lot of Muslim people now too. Yeah, it's really, really cool because what you have is you have, uh, you have Russia, you have Ukraine. We all know what's going on in Ukraine now, which is crazy. Um, but there's also Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and um, I can't think of that other country. The, the ones that, that had to do with the, oh, um, uh, the ones that had to do with the bombing in Boston. The Chechen. Sir, che Chechen, thank you, Chechen. 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 That's like predominantly Muslim. Well, what happens is a lot of Ukrainian people, they'll marry, um, like women generally, they'll, they'll just marry Muslim men. They, they just will. Even BC, you know, before Christ. And so these people get saved and then they're bringing these, you know, their, their husband's kids. Um, there's a, a powerful man, he's a prophetic uh, young man. He's 17, 18 years old, he's starting college. Awesome. So there's just a lot of great stuff. People are getting set free. There's a lot of healing there. Uh, people are getting healed, and so it's, it's very, very exciting. Um, okay, let's start here. Uh, if you guys want to open up, if you feel led to, uh, John, Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 26 to 27. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I pray this over people. I'm praying this over you, by the way. I'm praying this over you. Ugh. I can't wait to pray later. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> Guys, this is good. God is here. Um, oh, I'm so excited. I'm really excited to be here. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. John 14, verse 26, 27. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach all things and bring to your remembrance all things. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Let not, let, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is, this is powerful. Um, my wife, there, there, there's a guy by the name of Corey Russell. Okay? He's in leadership in International House of Prayer in Kansas City. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, he's just set on fire, radically saved. He's a, he's, he's a leader there, and he is a fiery man of God. And um, he, he has a compilation of, of music called the, the Ancient, of, of, I'm sorry, Preaching, Teachings, uh, called The Ancient Paths. And I happen to have one of his teachings or you know, one of his sessions or whatever on a USB stick in my car. And my wife happened to put it in my car and she was listening to it and she reminded me of it. And um, she, she reminded her of this. And so I really felt like God was in that. I don't know where. And this was asked after, Jamie, after you asked me to come share here. Just remember that. So uh, I listened to it over and over again. I... It's one day I, I spent the whole day painting my kitchen and kitchenette and area, whatever it is, uh, painting and listening to this over and over again. By like six hours later, I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> like, what else can I hear here, you know? And I've heard this before. I've heard it before. I've heard it before, okay? But I knew God was in it. So I just turned it off and I just continued what I was doing. No big deal. Next day, I, I go into my car and I hear it. And... It was like I never heard it before. It was the most crazy thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's not, it, it got so like exhausted from that day that I listened to it, but the next day it was like fresh, okay? And this is a word that he spoke a long time ago, okay? Again, a recording, he's a leader, he travels, he preaches, powerful. Um, so he talks about this guy, uh, I'm sure you guys all know him, uh, D.L. Moody. Yeah. Everyone know about D.L. Moody? If you don't, get to know this guy, he, he's, he's passed on now, he's with the Lord, he is, he is with the Lord, all right. But um, he, um, I, I'm just gonna kinda read a little, uh, some stuff, because I, I, I knew a little bit about this guy, but I didn't know this much, and I just started kinda going, I just went on the internet and just started reading just articles and this and that, so this is just kind of a compilation of stuff that I found on him. And this is what the Lord, by the way, really had, like, brought me to, you know, for him, this was, it was about him, listening to that, was, about, was, was kind of about him, even though Corey Russell talks about, you know, th that he goes, you know, we need, to get, we need to get a hold of the Holy Spirit, you know? God wants to break, you know, ministry. He wants to break all the ideas of him, the complications that we make around God, right? So, okay. So, um, D.L. Uh, D. Moody, or Dwight Lemon Moody, he was a great evangelist born in Massachusetts in 1837, Okay. Moody had very little education before his conversion to Christ. At 17, he could barely read or write. That's really big. He gets saved in 1855 by his Sunday school teacher who told him, I got to tell you that Jesus loves you. And uh, D.L. Moody, he worked in a shoe shop. It was his uncle's shoe shop. And he went in the back, you know, probably nodding heads. Um, he was in the back. He was, you know, sewing shoes. But this guy had the conviction of the Lord on him, his Sunday school teacher. He had the conviction of the Lord on him. And he said, I have to go tell him about him. I got to go tell him. 
Now, he was attending this church. It was a first congregation church in Boston. He was just attending it because it was his agreement to go there. If he was going to work for his uncle, he had to go to church. Okay? So, so he goes, he, he, you know, so this guy walks out, the, the, the Sunday school teacher, and I, I don't have his name here. It doesn't really matter anyway. But he, 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 he goes in and he walks by the place. He's like, I can't go in there, you know? But he says, no, I have to go. So he goes in there, tells him that Jesus loves him. Right in the back at work, guy gets on his knees, accepts the Lord, right? It's about 17 or 18, right? So he tells him that Jesus loves him in the back of, the, of, of his place of import, uh, employment where he knelt down on the floor and received Jesus Christ into his heart. He was so impressed. D.L. Moody was so impressed with the truth that he applied for admission to the church the same year. What do we do? We want to be a part of the church. When God gets a hold of our heart, we want to serve. We want to go. It's like, I'm. Oh, what can I do? I, I got to do anything, you know? You may be working in the world. You may be working in a school as a, as a janitor. It doesn't matter. It's like he wants, I got I to gotta, I gotta do something. So he was so impressed with the truth that he applied for admission to the church that same year. But, quote, his examination wasn't considered satisfactory and his application was held for over a year when he was thought to have made sufficient attainments in theology for church membership. Okay? When he, a lot of, if you go back and you read a lot of his like quotes and stuff, he, he, it, he, he it doesn't write well. You know, it, you can almost hear like, you know, he, you know, he's got like that, you know, back of the woods kind of accent, you know what I mean? Even though he was in Massachusetts, he, was, he wasn't that smart, you know? He, he didn't have much. But Jesus had a hold of this guy's heart. So he, he applies for church membership. They hold it over for a year. 1856, he gets filled with the Spirit. Now, it doesn't say that in a lot of these, like, secular kind of, you know, studies on him. It doesn't say that. But one of his sayings, and I, I apologize, this is written very small. One of his sayings, he says, quote, I was born of the flesh in 1837. I was born of the Spirit in 1856. He got saved in 1855 in the back of that shop. So you know this man got filled with the Spirit. He's probably speaking in tongues. This guy's on fire. This guy's set ablaze, right? Same year he moved to Chicago to start a business. Who knows? God maybe put it on his heart to start a business to become a traveling shoe salesman. He opened a Sunday school which he gathered from the streets and attended himself in 1858. So he, I mean, this guy didn't know what to do. He just went on the streets. He just said, I, I got to grab, you know, this Sunday school. He just started grabbing people from the streets. He was working in the daytime, and he was, he was evangelizing at night. He was ministering at night. He was doing missionary work at night, and he was pulling people off the street to come. He's like, I want to start a Sunday school, and I want to be a part of it. I, you know, I need to be a part of this. So he worked in the day and evangelized at night. 1860, he gave up his business as a shoe salesman and devoted himself to city missionary work. The school was officially organized in 1863 as the Illinois Street Church, later known as the Chicago Avenue Church, on which he became layman pastor. <laughs> this guy becomes pastor in 1863, guys. Like, he's got no education. He's got nothing. He's, I mean, look at what God's starting to do in this man's life. So the school was officially organized in 1863. Oh, I already read that. Excuse me. Oh, no, I didn't. The school was officially organized in 1863 as the Illinois Street Church, later known as the Chicago Avenue Church, on which he was layman pastor. He eventually became the president of Chicago's Young Men Christian Association, the YMCA, guys, from 1865 to 1869, and he founded the Bible Institute in Chicago. That's still around today, Okay. He also opened a training school uh, in domestic science in Northfield Hotel in 1890. His accomplishments are endless, and in sight of man's understanding of God, he did more than anyone could imagine. His preaching, important, his preaching was known to be simple, full of conviction, and pointed. This is a secular uh, collection of, of stuff that I got. This is not like, you know, Pentecostal, whatever, or charismatic magazine. This is, you know, this is what they're saying. Simple, full of conviction, and pointed. He laid stress on the gospel and on no sectarian opinions. Him and a man named Ira Sankey, who was a worship leader, had a gospel campaign in America starting in 1870. <laughs> 